This sandwich was a huge hit at a holiday party. And because Subway was the inspiration for this recipe video, of course I had to do a side-by-side -side comparison. And while I did enjoy Subway's sandwich, I have to admit that I liked mine better. And truthfully, this recipe does not even deviate from the concept of a standard meatball sub. In fact, my final result was still meatballs in red sauce, inside French bread, topped with provolone and Parmesan cheese. But what elevated my final product from Subway's original was simply incorporating classic cooking techniques, which quite frankly I think should be mandated in all sandwich shops. Which just goes to show you, with a little bit of love, knowledge, and technique, you can always make great food at home. So without wasting any more time, let's get into how I as a home cook would make a Subway-inspired meatball sub. Let's start off with the sauce. This is what I call as close to authentic Italian red sauce as I can make it, and it includes this key ingredient, San Marzano tomatoes. These tomatoes grow in Italian volcanic ash and pack so much more flavor and nutrients than fresh tomatoes and other canned tomatoes. So I highly recommend prioritizing this specific ingredient. I start this sauce with dicing some carrots, celery, and onions. These will go in a pot with some olive oil and salt. This is what some Italians might call the sofrito. This may look like a lot of onion, celery, and carrots, but I am going to use half for the sauce and half for the meatballs. I saute that all on medium-low for about 10 minutes or until everything is translucent and has had time to sweeten. Next, I add some tomato paste. I cook that off for about a minute, then add lots of fresh minced garlic. I'm also going to add my seasoning, which is salt, pepper, and some dried basil and oregano. Let that cook for about one minute, then I take out half of the sofrito to use in the meatballs. To finish this sauce, I add my tomatoes, which were blended in the can, and I make sure to rinse the can out with a splash of water to add back in the sauce. I bring my heat up to medium high until I start to see my sauce simmer, which is indicated by that light bubbling. I bring my heat down to low, and I simmer this for about an hour and a half. Splash in water occasionally as needed to keep the consistency you want. While my sauce is simmering, this is a great time to work on the star of the dish, the meatballs. Let me show you some of my tips and tricks to get the best meatballs. The key to a perfectly tender meatball is the slurry. A slurry is breadcrumbs soaked in milk and eggs. The slurry will prevent the meat from turning into hard rubber. And before you even think about skipping this step, just ask yourself, do you want to end up with hard rubbery balls? Because that is exactly what you will get if you skip this step, so do not. Mix that all together and you really want to give your breadcrumbs time to soak in the milk and eggs. So let that all sit together for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once my breadcrumbs are soft, now we can start mixing. I keep things standard with one pound of ground beef, one pound of ground pork, some salt, pepper, some more dried Italian herbs, and the reserved sofrito. This was actually a double batch, which is why my bowl is so full, but carefully I'm just going in with my hands with some folding motions to incorporate everything. Once everything is incorporated, you are ready to start molding. Roll out some even golf ball sized balls on a foiled sheet tray without any touching. Here is my next trick for quick meatballs. We are going to brown these under the broiler. The broiler is the fastest and my favorite way to get a large batch beautifully browned in an oven. So under my broiler, I pop these in for 12 to 15 minutes or until I start to see the meat brown. Pro tip, never serve meatballs without this color. Those brown spots are full of flavor and will add so much more to a dish than you think. Once those are cooked, drop those meatballs into your simmering sauce and let that all simmer together for about 30 to 40 minutes. This will help the flavors of the sauce marry the flavors of the meatballs, ensuring a very tasty final product. Another wonderful fact about meatball marinara is that you can make it all the night before and reheat it the next day without compromising flavor or texture, which makes this recipe super potluck friendly. Now let's talk about the bread. You can make your own bread or you can do what I did and find some French bread at a local bakery. The trick to getting the most out of this bread though is to toast it and toast it nicely. This will keep our sandwich from going soggy and it will also add a lovely buttery crunch. This is also a step I highly recommend not skipping. I slather on a generous amount of room temperature butter, bonus points if you make a garlic butter, and I pop that under my broiler until I have this gorgeous golden crust. Now comes the final and best step, which is the assembly. I scoop on some meatballs and sauce. On top of that will go some sliced provolone, which for some reason I ripped in half. And finally, a layer of Parmigiano Reggiano. You can pop that all under a broiler to get the cheese melty, but my sauce was hot enough to melt most of the cheese. One missing touch I wish I had was adding some kind of fresh green herb, like fresh parsley or green onion. But since Subway's didn't have any herbs, I tried to keep this sandwich simple. And that right there is a high quality, delicious meatball marinara sub made with love. Anyways, I hope you give this recipe a try. Be sure to subscribe, leave a like, and comment what you would like to see from me in my next recipe video.
Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.